Good morning and welcome back to another video here from the Off Grid Garage, Australia. This is probably the video you have all waited for and actually me too. This is the video where we show the capacity test of the EV Chinese 280 ampere hours 3.2 lithium iron phosphate batteries. And finally, after weeks, the capacity tester has arrived. And because I wasn't patient enough, I ordered a second one. And this is a different device working with a 100 amp shunt. That says 100 amp. And I've already tested these devices last night off camera. So, And they're both working pretty well, but they are not 100% accurate. So this all-in-one unit here shows the voltage to low. And this one with a shunt shows the voltage to high. Both devices are within specifications though. This one says 1% accuracy. So the difference to the actual measured voltage is within this 1%. And this one here shows us the voltage is 50 millivolt. The, the measured voltage here on the device is within this 50 millivolt as well. But because we are measuring so low voltages, 3.6, 3.62, 3.65 volts. This is all within 10, 20 millivolt difference. But still, it is not accurate. I checked with this multimeter and the other one I have, the other one I have, and they are both the same. So I think they are more reliable, more accurate than these ones here. But anyway, it's not too important because we want to measure the ampere hours we are getting out of this battery cell not the watt hours. So ampere hours does not factor in any voltage at all. It only measures the amps coming out of the battery over the time. This is ampere hours. So the voltage and the watt hours is less interesting in this test now. Okay, without further delay, I have fully, almost fully charged this battery here. We are at if I put this on volt, we are on 3.65 volts and the battery still takes 200 millivolt, uh, 200 milliamps. So it is 100% charged. All right, we do this test first with this device. And I've got a second cell here from the newest Carlotta delivery. Use the other meter and the shunt with this cell and do a comparison then and see what the difference are, if there are any at all. It's more like we're getting two different results, so we've got a better understanding what is going on with these cells. All right, folks, so this is now the setup. We've got the tester here on this side, sitting on the cable drum insulation panel uh, on top of the tester, connected with dual cable to the terminals, negative and positive. Because I know you gave me a hard time the last time when I tested these batteries. I had only single cables here and the circuit breaker in between and this was all... Well, it was as good as it got at that point of time. We've now got better equipment and I know, of course, you have losses here on the cables and the circuit breaker and the XT60 connectors. But this was just the first test, which wasn't too bad. But now I kept everything as short as possible, doubled up the cabling and I don't even have a fuse in between. So I will be monitoring this whole setup for the next 10 hours just to make sure nothing happens. <laughs> All right, I have selected this screen here. It gives us the voltage, the amps. This is the time. I need to set this all on zero. The time, the temperature on the board somewhere. We've got the watts currently being drawn by this tester. We've got the ampere hours accumulated and the watt hours accumulated. And it also shows us the internal resistance once we start pulling a load from the battery. And again, I'll show you here. I think the voltage has now dropped a little bit here, 3.64. And the tester shows only 3.61, which is what I said before, not interesting for the ampere hours because we only measure the amps over time. But the watt hours, including the voltage as well. So the watt hours may be a little bit too low what we are measuring to what actually happens. The great thing about this tester is you can set a low voltage disconnect. 
And I've tested this yesterday. I, I tested it with the lead acid battery and it works just fine. It disconnects the battery at 11 volts and discontinues the test. It stops the timer. It um, shows you the ampere hours and the watt hours being taken out of the battery and everything. It, it really disconnects the current as well. So it doesn't do any more discharge of the battery. But because we are having a low voltage here already on the display, it disconnects too early. I have asked the shop on AliExpress if there is any possibility to recalibrate the voltage here. Um, as per manual, there's only one, there's only this one paper in Chinese English here, and it says something about recalibration if you have a standard instrument, high voltage, low voltage, and all this kind of stuff. Um, I tried to follow this, but I couldn't figure out how to recalibrate the the um, the voltage here. I measured the amps and they are 100% accurate. So whatever we measure here, this is what we show on the display. And we are after the ampere hours of this battery today. So without further delay, let's get started. Crank up the amps. Okay. So we are pulling 23 amps. We are 10 seconds in the test. Temperature is rising. And this figure is quite interesting because this means we've got 140 milliohms. Is that correct? 140 milliohms of internal resistance of the cell. But if I look at the Carlotta delivery from last week, this one has an internal resistance of 0 0.15 milliohms. So I'm not sure how accurate this actually is. But okay, let's keep this one running. I um, will be back in about eight, nine hours with this test. And I frequently come in and measure the voltage directly at the terminals here because this one is off. So we've got 3.36 and 3.24 volt here at the tester. All right, folks, I keep you posted and update it during the day. Almost one ampere hour done. Of 280, <laughs> that's insane. So we have now pulled 10 ampere hours out of the battery after 26 minutes. I was literally standing here 26 minutes now and watching the numbers climbing there. It's so fascinating, it's amazing. I, I'm so excited. It is so good. So if we continue the test as it is now, it will take 11 and a half hours to discharge this battery with this load. That's fine. Probably not getting anything else done today. And before you ask, I just want to show you the voltage drop. And I actually will measure directly at the terminal here, not on top of the screw or on top of the uh, ring terminals, on top of the terminal of the battery. It just peaks out a little bit here on the side. And I do the same here. I measure directly down there at the terminal, not on top of the screw, to get the full voltage drop between terminal and terminal. Oh yeah, there you can still see the voltage. All right, so I'm going over here and at the bottom of the terminal on the tester, and we've got seven millivolt voltage drop, including all screws, connectors, terminals, everything. Okay, I'll do the same on the other side. And we've got 7.3 millivolt. So then we have 0.014. So 7 millivolt plus 7 millivolts is 14 millivolt uh, times 23 amps. This is our wattage. So we're losing 0.3 watts on the cables. And this times um, 11.5 hours. So we will lose 3.7, say 4 watt hours on the cables here for our test. So these are still the cable losses, but I mean 4 watt hours, that's fine. That's all we can do. Okay, I'll keep watching now. So we have just done a little bit over 80 ampere hours. Three hours, 
42 minutes until here. Another 200 ampere hours to go, hopefully. We are 8 hours and 20 minutes in the test. <laughs> I just wanted to make another video actually this afternoon <laughs> while this test is running here. And I had a quick look in the comments and because we were on holiday for the last four or five days, I didn't read any comments for that period of time. So I started commenting and then scrolled and scrolled and scrolled and kept commenting. Guys, are you crazy really? <laughs> that took me now two hours to answer uh, some of the questions, some of the comments over there, but I'm still not done. I'm not done. I, th I don't think I can sustain that over time, really. <laughs> All these, there are too many comments, really. Sorry, I'm reading everything, but I may not be able to reply to every single comment as I did until ah oh, now. Ah, oh. then I thought, oh, the test is still running. Let's have a look. Okay, let's have a look. 188 ampere hours we have pulled out of this battery. I think the voltage has never changed here. 3.16 volts. And the amps have dropped from 23, I think, to 22.7. Of course, because the voltage of the battery cell goes down, the amps will go down as well. Let me measure the voltage here of the battery. So 3.26 volts still. It is going super strong. Super strong. We have pulled out 0.6 kilowatt hours out of the battery. Yeah, now with this box setup thing, this this will not be a mobile solution. It was never never meant to be. I I just again I forgot to mention this. It's clear for me, but not for you, of course. This is of course a toolbox, um, but this is not a mobile solution. You would not be able to lift this one up. The batteries are sitting flat on the plastic on the plastic bottom of the box, on the concrete here, and then I will just lock this one up as per regulation done. So the, the batteries won't be accessible easily. This is all stationary solution, not mobile. I have read all your comments about the um, compressing stuff as well for the battery cells. So if you need to compress them or not. And again, 50% of the people say you need to compress them, you should compress them. And the other 50% say you don't need to. There's no need because you're not running high currents through these cells. All right. 190 ampere hours so far, 600 watt hours, 8 hours, 23 minutes. Still going strong, very strong. I've got a good feeling. We get the 280 ampere hours out of this cell. Mm. The other one is still charging and we put this one on tomorrow, but this will be a different video. Different cell and different, we're using this battery monitor with a shunt and see what the results are with this one. Okay, see you later. So, and now after 10 hours and 20 minutes, we have reached the nominal voltage of 3.2 volts. We are still discharging uh, 233 ampere hours, 740 watt hours. And the battery is still going strong. So I hope there's more juice in it and it runs for another hour at least. But we are getting closer. So and we now have 254 ampere hours, 800 watt hours, so 0 0.8 kilowatt hours already out of the battery. The voltage 3.168, still going very strong. So we already got more capacity out of the battery than the last time with this better setup, far better setup than the light bulbs. Well, and we just slipped under the three volt mark and we have 272 ampere hours so far, but the test is still running. 855 watt hours 12 hours, one minute. This is insane. 12 hours. Okay, I will now stay with the battery here and see the voltage dropping to 2.5. And then I will turn off the power. Now I will disconnect the current draw. We are very close. 
2.97 well see the tester now shows 2.56 volts for the battery but in reality we still got 2.7 volts in the battery so it's still going i'm not showing you the results because we are still going i don't want to spoil it but this would be the moment the tester would actually turn off but we still have capacity left uh, so this voltage is dropping fast now 2.55 and going down quickly i will turn it off at 2.5 And we are getting close. We're using the current already. This is measured directly at the terminals of the battery. And shut off. Okay. Voltage goes up again because I took the load away. And we've got a result here, just here under my finger. So the test went for, oh, thanks. The, the fan was running for 12 hours and 21 minutes. <laughs> okay, here's the result. We got 279.68 ampere hours out of this battery, which is 873.74 watt hours. So I would say we have measured the full capacity out of this battery from 3.65 volts down to 2.5 volts. And because I read the specifications again of the battery, they're actually saying if you charge the battery to 100% and do the capacity test, you should wait one hour after fully charging the battery. This is necessary for the chemicals, for the chemical reaction to finalize in here everything settles down because these are high volume cells they need some time to equalize inside basically so they always need some time i didn't wait an hour i probably waited about 15 minutes and then i started the test so and this can give you another couple of ampere hours as well a couple of percentage yeah so far guys you should not leave the battery like this for too long this battery is on 2.5 volts now and needs immediate recharge to a safe value of 3.1 3.2 volts at least so bring the battery over 25 30 percent and then you can leave it that's fine but if you leave it like this you will have increased degradation inside the batteries never leave a battery fully empty or fully charged for too long okay guys here's the result again 279.68 ampere hours i'm really impressed i will prepare this battery now for tomorrow's test and we will use the other tester as i said before and see if we get the same good result or a different result we will see how this works out okay guys as always thank you so much for your support thank you for all your hundreds of comments on my videos and i think we shall see us again in the next video tomorrow and do the second capacity test so it's 11 p.m and the test has just finished all right see you tomorrow in the next video bye bye